Good morning, I'm Dr. Pascal, and welcome to Pockets of Excellence for the Danbury School System. I am Superintendent of Schools, and this is Kevin Walston, my Assistant Superintendent. Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about our planning process <clears throat> and um, how it um, braids into our um, equity and ad adequacy program. Um, for the past year, for, for multiple years, we've been operating on uh, long-range goals um, for the district. Um, those goals are aligned with um, what central office administrators are doing, and then um, with uh, building principals, and then hopefully with teachers, so that we have a um, central focus of, of the work uh, that we're doing in the district. Um, with board conversation, we felt the long-range plan would be uh, much more appropriate. <clears throat> but we were a little hesitant because we really didn't want to develop a plan that was going to be shelved and really not integral in the work that we're doing um, while we're implementing our goals. So our plan uh, is, is, has a nexus to our equity and access work that we're doing. And Kevin, um, this is Kevin's second year in the district, began last year with uh, looking at our needs, looking at a um, conversation through a, a needs assessment and gathering data uh, with uh, stakeholders, uh, community, uh, even students uh, to talk about uh, direction and how these two um, elements could come together in terms of providing ad adequacy of programming, equity, and uh, equality in the work that we're doing. Uh, for uh, purpose of graduating competent students, capable students, um, which aligns itself with what we call the portrait of a graduate. Um, what does what the community expect of a graduate from Danbury High School? What does that diploma mean? And then bring that down into the way we put our curriculum together, the way we do our programming together, so that uh, we're marching towards that, um, that outcome. And uh, Kevin today is gonna talk about a little bit about the work, um, we're still in, the, I would say, more than 70% completed with the work, <clears throat> and then we'll be taking it to the board for approval, um, and then as we will be moving it out. So, Kevin, maybe you could talk to the audience about things that you have done and how the two intertwine. Mm -hmm. And so the <clears throat> the work is multi-layered in many respects, as you know. Uh, we had a we had an opportunity. Last year, we had a stakeholder session in December of 2018, uh, where we met um, a community of stakeholders from um, parent representation, uh, teachers, administrators, um, and community stakeholders. And, and, and the discussion started with um, um, developing the characteristics of the portrait of the graduate. And we got feedback from the community on what um, the portrait of a graduate would look like and that helped to drive uh, the ideas and thoughts behind the vision and mission for Danbury Public Schools. Um, soon thereafter, um, a representative group from the district um, attended the Nellie May convening. Um, as you are aware, I don't know if our community is aware, we are a recipient of a Nellie May uh, grant. And in that grant, um, it's, it's required of our district to participate in Nellie May convening seven or eight districts around the New England area. Um, and so it was at that time we were revisiting our work around access and equity. Um, d during our visit, we were challenged as a district. Uh, we were questioned, and one of the questions that the team and I received was, hey, does Danbury Public Schools have an equity statement? And, 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 and do you guys have something in writing around your beliefs around equity? And during that three-day convening, it occurred to the team and I that the strategic plan work that we had committed to with you and the board and the equity, access and equity policy that was soon to be developed, that work needed to live in a plan if we were going to um, live out our commitment to honor, look, honor the things that was going to be eventually in our equity policy. And so um, getting feedback from multiple stakeholders, we landed on six uh, priorities to help move the strategic plan. And one of them was around teaching and learning. Another one was around culture and climate. Uh, another one was around um, uh, 
teacher acquisition, uh, professional development, and resource allocation. And resource allocation, um, and, and I'll start there and, and uh, expand upon that a little bit. Those other five areas, um, part of the way we have, we begin to start to develop the plan um, before we spend money, before we commit to programs, before we commit to staff, before we commit to personnel, um, we make sure it is in alignment with those other five priorities. Mm -hmm. um, and in the area of uh, teacher acquisition, um, important to the district as referenced in the policy uh, that the board just approved, the equity and diversity policy, um, that we go out and number one, try to find staff that is representative of the population that we serve. Um, and then at the same time, if it's not represented in terms of demographic with the population we serve, we make sure that we come up with a profile of the type of staff member we want in Denver Public Schools and then recruit in that effort. Um, making sure that they're culturally responsive, making sure um, they have the content knowledge um, and making sure they're prepared to work in our um, urban and diverse environment. Um, in the area of uh, professional development, uh, we've committed to and our plan to making sure um, our staff um, gets the professional development to make sure our classrooms are biased and barrier free, um, recognizing the change in demographics in our uh, community um, over the last five and ten years, um, and, and begin to identify um, and begin to identify um, in a pro through a professional development plan um, a focus for all staff in the district and honor it and commit to it over the next three to five years. Um, in terms of curriculum, some of the highlights in the curriculum area of teaching and learning, um, it was, it, it's about revisiting and fine-tuning the curriculum that um, already exists. Uh, but some of the highlights also include uh, revisiting the way when we do revise the curriculum, make sure it's revised and, and being mindful and, and making sure it's culturally responsive for all students. Which means, and for the audience's sake, to, uh, let's look at the English and the selection of uh, reading topics and books. We would look at literature that would be representative. Yes. We would look at learning activities that would look deeper into the contribution of different cultures, things of that nature. Yes. So it's an integrated part of what, the work that we do. Absolutely. So when Absolutely. we do some rewriting. Um, talk a little bit about the culture and climate, or the responsive classroom work that we're working on. Uh, for the audience, um, say, um, there has been some legislation the past few years regarding um, um, responsive education, which means the takeaway from that is in terms of student, um, student behavior, um, and, um, rather than simply punishment, but the, the established baseline expectations so that we have a safe environment, there's not a threatening environment. Um, and along those lines, uh, when the rules are broken or students make poor judgments and some things, that they uh, receive uh, you know, the, the right, uh, right uh, stimulus to change that behavior, uh, rather than just um, uh, removing them from, from the classroom permanently or temporarily, uh, making sure that um, their time um, for them when they're not in class or otherwise, they're reacting to uh, the behavior that they committed to hopefully to extinct that behavior. And some of it is one-on-one -on -one conversations with the teacher, other is uh, doing some reflection. Um, but we spent some time this summer uh, just training with um, administrators and our support staff on that mindset, said, um, always keeping in mind safety uh, as a high priority um, and also, in terms of equity and access, that students not be denied an education for uh, misbehaving, but they uh, remedy that misbehavior in a way that's going to have them uh, be able to reclaim the content in their classroom. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. And so if, if I can, just go back a little bit and, and, and to your point about um, trying to land on a program to support the social-emotional growth of students in our district. And so, as you know, we've done great work in this district um, under your leadership, you know, in, in over, over a decade now. And you challenged the cabinet and the staff with trying to land on a social emotional program that's going to support students, um, the, the social emotional growth. And so uh, the cabinet and the team came back um, 
with an approach through the team's um, recommendation was to adopt uh, restorative practices as a focus for the district to, to address this, this goal. And we spent um, the last school year working with administrators, providing professional development and uh, uh, developing community amongst, amongst our administrators and really trying to model the work that we expect them to turnkey with their staff and then so that staff can then model and begin to implement this work in their classroom. And so the restorative practices model is really about building relationships 80% of the time. And because we've built relationships as a community, when the community has been harmed in any way um, or wrongdoing has been done in the community, 20% um, of restorative practices is about restorative conferences and justices. And so what we're trying to um, share with our teaching community right now is building community in our classrooms and our administrators are leading conversations about um, ACE scores, which, which, which talks about um, students when they come into our schools and, 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 and the crisis they might be bringing to schools every day, not to, mention, um, not to mention language barriers and cultural barriers that our students might be bringing to schools every day, and, and ensuring that our staff is mindful of those, of, those, um, of those weights that our kids are carrying every day, right? And, and, and building community and, and appreciating uh, the diversity in our school community. Um, and then making sure we're mindful of all of those things when responding when, when, students, when, when, students, have, when, when students have mistakes, when students um, do something that's harmful to the community, whether it's to each other or to the greater community. And so restorative practices allows uh, for any of our teachers to sit with students. Um, and, and, and so we might intentionally be in a circle community where we're building community and just talking about um, how things were on a given weekend, how things were over the summer, um, how things were just in general. Um, and, and that community building allows for an opportunity to restore the community um, when something goes wrong. So, I yeah, always think about the three R's, right? The reading, writing, with arithmetic. So, w w w the takeaway for, for me, and what I'd like the audience to realize is that there's another R of creating relationships. Um, it, it sounds simple, and yet um, becomes a trust in the environment. Right. So, youngsters will take risks if there's a misbehavior, it may be something that occurred outside the classroom, brought into the classroom, allows them to maybe go to and seek out some advice as um, the antecedent to possibly a bad day. Right. Um, to, um, but nowhere in there does it say, um, minimizes the expectation of safety or, or Board of Education regulations or rules regarding um, student behavior, is my understanding. Right. Right. But rather a way of getting there to de-escalate and intervene um, prior to occurrences, maybe misbehavior. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked that clarifying question um, because I, it will be important as we communicate this work to students, to families, to staff, to administration, um, you know, it, implementing restorative practices and restorative conferences and restorative justice um, actually is an additional layer on top of our already code of conduct. And so some states, some districts who, uh, who have implemented this work actually embed the restorative practices in the code of conduct uh, so that more, we're more consistent um, in our responses when, when, when harm has been done to the community. Um, and so it actually, if done right, um, actually provides more structure when, when things go wrong. Um, and so I'm hoping, um, and, and through the lens of our ac access and equity policy, when we revisit policies like our code of conduct, we're mindful in that update, we're mindful of our commitment to restorative practices and, and, and that language and those responses live in a document. As in anything, much of this will fall on the shoulders of the teachers in terms of the day by day. <clears throat> it has become evident, evident to me and to m many educators that time spent in this really creates a better positive environment for teaching and learning. Um, but it will take time to take hold. There's, there's a recrafting of some mindsets right. and accountability. 
but I think the work um, will benefit the community, will benefit our <coughs> students, and ultimately lead to uh, the portrait of the graduate, Absolutely. which is the end in mind. Um, you know, what, it, what, what do we expect of this, our vision of a, of a graduate? Which then informs us, what is a rising eighth grader uh, into high school? Um, what's our vision of that? Um, so then we have some continuity from grade level, from level to level, uh, which I think will benefit the whole community. Um, I think what we'll do is, part of this work, I'll ask for the, the vision statement to be placed on the crawler okay. so the audience can see that. Okay. Um, and also, any work we have with equity, we'll post as well. Okay. Um, anything, um, what's the time frame of, on this? So our, <clears throat> our time frame as of right now is to um, have a plan ready for the board's consideration uh, at the end of November, uh, last board meeting in November. Um, we are, um, as you might be aware, we're, as you know, we're going to be in the front of the community tomorrow. Um, so the community group that initially um, gave us feedback on the portrait of the graduate and, and, and language to help inform our vision and mission, uh, we're going to get back in front of them tomorrow and say, hey, what do you think? You know, over the last year, we've been working hard behind the scenes, and we'd like some last-minute feedback and see if we're in alignment of what you had hoped. Uh, this vision and mission uh, would, would, would look like, and, um, and, and, and I'm hoping for positive feedback from them. Uh, we will also be in the advisory group to the superintendent, the TDAC committee, to the board, um, also in November to get some last minute feedback from them. Um, and so if those two things go well, I'm hoping we'll be in front of the board by the end of November. As another part of closure, I find interesting, the timing is always important. We're also reviewing all of our policies in the district, and I, and I commend the board for doing that. It is time, late, and commitment. Um, but we'll be, the eyes that will be looking at these policy development will um, have a nexus to the, to the plan. So I think the timing, uh, even serendipitously in a way, uh, will work out real well for us. Um, if, if you want some more information, we would gladly get, um, please call us, but we'll have some information on our website regarding our strategic planning. Um, this show uh, is a series of shows we'll be doing this year to inform the community of the work. Hopefully we'll come back um, with a finished product and we'll be able to communicate awesome. with the audience. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm Dr. Pascrella. Um, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Sir.